like you can't even just go home from the club and fuck anyone anymore. It's like you have to set fucking boundaries in the Uber yeah. on the way there and be like, hey, so this is, I'm not this is just for anything. Like, yeah, it's like, why do we even have to say that? Like, this is our first time meeting. I shouldn't have to tell you I'm not looking for anything. Bitch, what I was trying to say is this situation got me so wet and so, so dry at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> What's up, bitches? Welcome back to So Wet, So Dry. I'm Fiji, and this is Autumn, and we're back with our 12th episode, I think. 13th. 13th, bitch. I don't know what day it is. I love 13th. Yeah, <laughs> that's your birthday. Your birthday is 13th. Yeah, it's my lucky number, 13th. Okay, per. We love that. So we're back with our 13th episode. Also, we just want to say shout out to everybody for listening on Spotify. We finally qualified to monetize, so you guys are amazing, killing it. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so we're going to start off the episode how we always do, talking about what we're so wet and so dry about in this very moment. I will start us off. I am so wet right now about people who just, like, respect my need for space and, like, boundaries and just, like, taking my time. Like, especially yeah. with dating, because, like, you know, like, I've talked about on the podcast, like, I haven't been, like, quite ready to date, and then I started dating again. And by dating, I mean, like, casually and like casual right. sex and like all of those things and I just yeah. appreciate the people who like give me that that time and yeah. space and stuck around and like you know I yeah love and that. the best the best part is when you don't need to ask for that space they just know to give it to you because that's what I think what you're talking about it's like when you don't need to like you know set the tone like initially it's like right away because people can be too much but it's like they just know like yes. that. I, you know, people don't like it when I'm on their dick all the time. Like, yes. um, so that's a really nice. I have yet to kind of find that. I feel like, I don't know. I mean, it's hard because everyone's on a different place in their dating journey. So it's like also sometimes I feel bad because it's like if you're looking for something deeper, then go find that. But also just right. if you are interested in me and you want to like wait it out, just like I respect when you do that. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's good that you know that you're not at a place for something deeper because I think my problem is, like, I think I am because I love love. Yeah. But I'm really not. And then it comes back to bite me later and it ends up sucking. Yeah. So that's that's a green flag, bitch. I'm so wet because, like, I definitely, like, have, like, friends where I live. But I'm definitely, I've always been more of a person that has, like, solid people and I don't have, like, a lot of friends. Like, I really just, like, stick to a few yeah. Um, and I, I don't know, I started working at this new company and there's some people there that I just really like and it just feels really nice to like have friends and like we're going to hang out and like do stuff like it's hard to find like like minded people or people that like, you know, I just feel like a lot like we're all into the same things like we all are like stoners like we all Love like that. like astrology and shit and are into like energy and like we're all in the same like career, like want to be in film and TV. So it's just nice. Like, and it's honestly like when you're adult, like you meet a lot of friends at work, which is like weird. Cause when you yeah. grow up, it's like you go to work, you leave and like you have coworkers that you're friends with, but I don't know, like a nine to five coworker is different than like a customer service coworker, you know, yeah. like you guys are, I don't know. So yeah, I'm just, what about that? Yeah. And honestly, like you were saying how it like breaks up the day nicely. Like when you're like stressed at work, you have someone to talk to about it that like gets it. So right. That's definitely. Yeah. Bad. Because the work in like film and TV, like, especially when it's remote, like it feels like you're on an Island and you're just like doing everything by yourself. So it is nice to like connect and be like, yeah, guys, like we're fucking up. Like we always say like, shit's bad but we're all on the same page so what are they gonna do right. like it's three of us against them like you know I love that for you so yeah switching gears I'm so dry about kind of the opposite of what I'm so wet about like I'm so dry about honestly like one people not respecting my boundaries and like expectations and also just setting boundaries in general like I've never yeah. been great at setting boundaries and it's like something that I'm working on a lot in therapy and like I've gotten better at it but even when I do it, it's just, like, you're in that position where you feel like a bitch sometimes because, like, you do set a boundary and people, like, take it as, like, a personal attack or think it's something wrong with them and, like, friendships and dating and, like, everything, even, like, work. Like, you know, so it's just, it's yeah. hard for me because, like, I feel like I wait too long and I get to that point where I just, like, spaz out instead of, like, actually setting the boundary from the beginning. But, right, yeah, I'm very dry. Yeah, but I think it's, like, 
it's like the toughest thing to like really learn in life. One of the tough things is like that like what like people's emotional reactions to you doing something healthy, like setting a boundary is not your problem. Yeah. And it's like people will really try to like play the victim when you set like a simple boundary, just like, you know, like I don't want to FaceTime as much or like I need space for a week or whatever it is. And then they're like, oh, like you don't love me and they make you feel bad. But it's like you need to step away from that because that's just their trauma coming up. And it's like, I feel like our generation has like, like, it's like we say, like, we're in our selfish era, but it's like, are we even being selfish? Like, right. we're literally it's just, just like, care, bro, like self care looks so it's not just like face masks and like getting your nails done. Like, it's literally like trying to like not always be so immersed in like other people's emotions and just kind of step away from that and be like, I set my boundary. I did what I needed to do. Like, I've been saying this, like, if I'm the villain in someone else's story for, like, really just putting myself first, like, yeah. so okay. be it. At this point, I used to, like, lose sleep over it and feel bad. And now I'm just at a point where I'm, like, we only have one life. Yeah. And, like, I'm not wasting it, like, doing things I don't want to do. Exactly. And, like, exactly. Yeah. Like, people just need to, like, respect boundaries when you set them, but they're not going to. And, unfortunately, that's, like – not your problem. It's on them. And my, right. my thing is too, like, I feel like I usually just think that I set a boundary by like distancing myself. Like I'm a big, like, you know, not text yeah. them back, kind of like give space, like whatever. And like, I had a situation recently with like someone I was like kind of seeing, like I would say like casual when I'm like drunk, like we would kiss sometimes, like whatever, not that deep. Right. But I told him like, I'm not really like looking for anything. And like, it was messy. And he, like, sent me this, like, long-ass fucking message, like, late as fuck at night, just, like, gaslighting the fuck out of me and being, like, oh, I'm done with you, like, da-da-da-da-da. And I'm, like, first of all, it was never, like, that deep. And second of all, like, you clearly, like, you're done with me because, like... I don't know. It was just too much. Yeah. He was like, I give up on you. Yeah. And you're like, what am I doing? Right. Right. That's why I'm like wet about the opposite. Like the people who actually just like respect that I don't want to talk all the time or that I'm not looking for anything. Like they just like respect that. And if I don't text them back, they get the message. But like people who are just like kind of on your ass or just like try to do this like toxic dramatic thing. It's just like, ew, like I don't want to see you anymore because what the fuck is that? Like you want me to fight back, but no. I'm not. Yeah, guys, Fiji's wet and dry about boundaries for different reasons right now. And that's what our podcast is all about, bitch. Duality, bitch. Let's go. Duality. Um, But yeah, I have to say what I'm dry about now, right? What was it again? (laughs) Um, Um, Oh, I remember. Okay. So yeah. So I feel like I've been, like, out and, you know, like, proud for a while. But it's, like, sometimes I get into certain spaces and I I hide. And I have privilege because, A, I look straight. And, B, I'm queer, I'm bisexual, like, I like different genders. So if I needed to, I could just talk about my ex-boyfriend. I could talk about this and that. Like, I don't. You know what I mean as to, like, someone that's a lesbian, it's like, you know, they are going to have to lie at that point. I'm not lying. I'm just withholding information. (laughs) Even though I literally dated one guy and, like, 17 (laughs) girls. So it's like, but anyways. But, yeah, but then it's like, is it me, though? Because I think that I stereotype girls, like, specifically, like, girls that are in sororities, girls that are a size fucking double zero, like, (laughs) And it's really fucked up, but it's like though like blonde Barbie looking bitches they could that are be gay too, right? But it's like I think I'm like oh no, like because it just brings me back to high school when yeah. like I came out to my friends originally, but they were kind of like oh they were the type of girls that were like oh do you like me like and I'm like oh my god like when all straight girls think that like right. bi girls have a crush on them and yeah yeah so it brings me back to that but it's like I need to learn to give people a chance and not just like fucking like label them before I even know like yeah and it's like but it's like I don't know and it's like the type of straight girl that's like fine with gay guys but like not with like lesbians yeah. 
like that those type of people but it's like i don't really know if they're those type of people but they look like they are well it's also sometimes like the subtle things that they say because i feel like i'm like that too but i've always been like just less comfortable owning my sexuality at all like i don't talk about girls to my parents even though i know they don't care but it's just because like just certain things or like people at work you don't want to just be like I don't know, like, they'll say certain stuff if that makes you think, oh, if they think that, then they must think that. Yeah. So it's, like, sometimes the associations are legit, but it's also, like, regardless, we should just be proud and, like, own who we are. Yeah, 100%. And it's, like, and I, I almost feel like the universe is, like, doing this as a test for me to be, like, don't, like, judge a book by its cover. Yeah. And, like, maybe I'll be right. And these people I'm talking about will turn out to be weird if they know that I like girls. And then you cut them off. And then I cut them off and it's fine. You know what I mean? Like I, in in moments like this, I try to think like, what would Fletcher do? Like she is a queer hot icon. You think Fletcher would give a fuck about these fucking bitches? No. Yeah. So I just, that's what I try to remind myself or like Drew Afualo or like these like women that really just own themselves. Yeah. And I try to like channel that energy and it really helps. So I'm like, fuck, Yeah. Um, but yeah, so let's not judge people by their appearances, but also we could be right. So it's a little confusing. Right. Um, but yeah. Duality, again, we're wet. Again. Exactly, bro. (laughs) But yeah, so today, you guys, we are talking about one night stands. Um, you know, the classic one night stand. What we're wet about one night stands, what we're dry about one night stands. So basically, you know, things we like, things we don't fuck with. Um, and of course, we went to you guys and asked you how you felt about it um, on our Instagram at So What So Dry. So we asked you guys and we put a few polls out there. We also got some crazy <laughs> stories yeah, you submitted. Guys crazy. <laughs> you guys are so we're going to share some of those at the end. So make sure you stick around because it's truly what the fuck. So um, but the first poll we put out was basically like, how do one night stands typically go for you? Like, do they are they lit? Are they do you like it? Or do they typically end up being like, why the fuck did I do yeah. that the next morning? Loki, that's how it is for me. Yeah, so, same. <laughs> um, but 61% of y'all said um, they were good. Like, you have mostly enjoyable one-night stands. And 39% that, no, they're not good. Um, and I think that we put it out on, like, Fiji's Instagram and mine and stuff. So it's like, I feel like we do have a good, um, like, men and women and, yeah. like, not some non-binary people, I'm sure, too. But, like, I feel like it's kind of a good balance. I feel like a lot of the men, especially on Fiji's Instagram, were like, oh, they're so good. And then <laughs> yeah. women were like, they're horrible. Yeah. So that's definitely something to take into consideration, too. Yeah, because honestly, like, I would say, like, a good amount of women did definitely say that they were good, too. But, like, every single man almost said that they right. were good. And, like, yeah. that's kind of what we expect. Because, honestly, when I was looking at these results, I was like, y'all are lying. What? Y'all are yeah. lying or we've just fucked more people than the rest of y'all. Because I don't know. Or we just fucked the wrong people. I don't know. Because I feel like most yeah. of my one-night stands have been pretty, like, I wouldn't say terrible, but just not worth it. And here's the thing. It's like, what do we qualify as a good one-night stand? Because to me... All of my good one night stands turned into something more. Because right. if it was good, I'm coming back for more. And then maybe it got like toxic and fizzled out or whatever. But it's right. like at the end of the day, like if it's a bad, you know, it's like I've most a one night stand is someone that you don't talk to again. Like right. it's literally just that one time. And it's like I wish I had a story like when I was like in Europe and I like fucked this hot girl and like we didn't talk again, not because we didn't want it yeah. to, but because it but I was I literally good. had a yeah, I had a girlfriend, so I couldn't do that. It's fine. But um, so I just think it's like really I think it's interesting. It's like what qualifies a good one night stand? Right. And that's why we asked the second question, because I was we originally yeah. just had the one. And then I was seeing the results and I was like, wait, we, this needs to make more sense because we need more. Yeah, because we've both Info. had one night stands that were like we what we thought would have been a one night stand turn into something more. So we're like, right. maybe other people consider a one night stand to be something different. So you, yes. you want to sit, share those results because those are interesting too. So basically the second poll was like, what ends up happening with your one night stands? Like A, does it turn into like a friends with benefits situation? B, does it become a situationship? Y'all are dating, like you're in love type shit. 
<laughs> or um, do you never, you know, speak again? Which to me is like a one night stand. You never speak again. Right. But again, Fiji and I have had things that were one night stand things and like didn't think we would fuck with them after, but then fuck around and fell in love. <laughs> Listen to our orgasm episode. Yeah. Oxytocin, Oxytocin is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, so 43% of y'all said it turns into friends with benefits. That was the highest percentage. Right behind, 36% turn into situationships slash dating and only like 21% um, never speak again. So it's like with those results, it makes sense because y'all are getting something out of these good one night stands. Either it's friends with benefits or you fall into some type of like relationship type thing. Um, so, and it's like, it's like the never speak again. It's like either you never speak again because it was horrible and you hate them or you never speak again because like they're in a different country and it was like a magical thing. I want one of those, bro. Bro. Yeah. I was trying to really rack my brain. Maybe I'll think of one, but I don't. I was trying to, cause I feel like I have had a good one night stand and then we never talked again. But then it's like, wouldn't I remember if it was that good? So yeah, not. exactly. Exa- that's what I was thinking. The only thing I could think of is that dude that I've told this story before on the podcast, but that ate my pussy really good. And right. then I cut him off because it was too good. But that's the only. That's like perfect, though. I There's this one. There was this one girl in L.A. Um, who I like made out with in the bar like we had gone to a concert and then like we all went to this bar after and we like never talked again because like I don't know I just like wasn't I was kind of like low-key date I was about to start dating someone yeah but we weren't official yet like I didn't cheat but we were like about to start dating so it was like one last hurrah I guess (laughs) and that was pretty good but we didn't fuck like you see that's like you know how that's my thing lately especially like being celibate or whatever when I was celibate right like I just, like, love going out and kissing someone and making them my fake boyfriend-girlfriend for the night and then disappearing because I feel like that's the fun part for me. So if that's considered a one-night stay, and I've definitely had some of those that were good. I think that's something else. (laughs) That's, like, I'm going to make you my boyfriend for the night. That's, like, some lyric to a song. I don't know. I mean, maybe. It kind of is. It's like, does one night stand, like, what if people just like to kiss, they don't like to have sex, and they would kind of count that as a one night stand, I guess, you know? I still, Um, I feel like for the nature of this episode, for the most part, we're talking about sex. Yeah, for our purposes, yeah. But, like, if if we're talking about just making out and kissing, then I've definitely had had a lot of those that I feel like were good, because I knew if I took it to the next part of fucking, it wouldn't be good anymore. You know? I like to kiss girls, but I don't like to kiss men. I, I like honestly, kiss I always say this, but I am literally a straight man's dream. I don't <laughs> I like know. to kiss. Just I like don't want my fuck. pussy ate. I just want you to fuck me from the back. Talk to me horribly. And like, don't. And then like, don't look at me either. Like, I like it's just like crazy. But that's just how I feel about men. Like, it's just like a kink thing. I don't yeah. even know. But I did tell Fiji, I don't know, anyway, I'm going to shut up now, okay. Um, but yeah, so those are our results. Interesting. I think it's like before when we were planning this episode, we didn't think like what's the definition of a one night stand. So I'm glad we're kind of like coming to that conclusion right now. Um, but yeah, we're going to kind of just go through what we're wet about, what we're so dry about one night stands and share like a shit ton of stories that we have for you guys. Um specifically about one night stands so let's get into it what we're obviously wet about with one night stands what makes them good is when you come obviously if you have a good yeah. orgasm or feel really turned or on feel really turned on it doesn't have to end with orgasm again listen to our orgasm episode but you feel pleasure but you feel pleasured you had fun it was like adrenaline exhilarating ah 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 um <laughs> And yeah, I think I've only like when I was really trying to rack my brain for like a good one night stand that was like, that's it. it I think the only one, there's probably others that I just can't remember, but that was the first time I had sex with a girl. Yeah, I was there. You were there, like not in the room. Not in the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was in she the was other room. with popcorn. Um, yeah, I mean, she, Autumn was in the room, the other room fucking someone else. Yeah. Which was not quite as good. 
Yeah, we'll get into that. I okay. want you to tell okay, your Okay, I'll story. tell mine first. So actually, who, the first girl I fucked was Autumn's ex's <laughs> best friend. And I had a class with her too. But we were currently dating when yeah. you guys met. So you, yeah. yeah, you were dating her best friend and I had a class with her. So yeah, we went there one night. I don't know. I was like, bitch, you have to fuck her because like, she was so cool, and, like, I had just spent, like, a whole summer in Europe with my girlfriend and her, and, like, I knew, like, and I was, like, Fiji would like her. Like, I totally just, but. Yeah, okay. and I had a class with her, and we sat across from each right. other, so I knew, like, I already knew her personality, and I thought she was cute, like, whatever, but I was kind of scared, never fucked a girl before, but she yeah. was, like, super hot, how she, like, came on to me, like, we fucked, I came, it was great. How did um, she come on to you? Can I you don't, remind I me? just remember we were, like, in the kitchen, and I think she was just, like, I don't know. She was just, like, you're really hot. Like, something about being in class. Like, I don't even know. Like, it was something about, like, our sexual tension. And then what was hot about it, too, is we didn't really talk after that. Like, we never, like, fucked again, but we still had class together. So we would yeah. just kind of look at each other across the room and just be like, yeah, like, you know? Like, it was just one of those things where we knew that was it, but, like, it was a vibe. She broke my Dude. bisexual virginity. And you came. Yeah. I know. I remember you being, like, so happy about that. I was just like, <laughs> like, you know, like, when your mom is, like, when you get your period, like, that's what it felt. Autumn was just like, oh, my God, you came. <laughs> I was just like, it's real. Like, she's discovering herself. Like, I'm just like, damn, like, the first time I had sex with a girl, I was not even close to coming. Like, I mean, I was younger. That's probably why. But it's just like. Yeah, I was so happy for you. But I was still dating, like, Fiji's one-night stand's best friend. <laughs> but we were in an open relationship. Yeah. And I kind of get toxic in those relationships. It's fine. That's why we're not doing it anymore. Right. Maybe. It depends. It depends. That's I have right my person. ideal open relationship situation, but it's like, would people be down for that? I don't You've know. learned a lot, so you know your expectations. I've learned a lot, yeah. So basically, I was just, like, hooking up with this girl to make her jealous, and, like, it worked, so LOL. But anyways, so, yeah, we were just, like, she had huge tits, and I never know what to do with big tits. I'm like, what the fuck do I do? Like, what do I do? I feel like I'm good at, like, making love to, like, the little ones and shit, but, like, the <laughs> big ones, I'm just like, I just get so no, I think honestly, I'm really I'm turned on like I'm just like oh my god like I think I just like I'm not good enough to like touch these like they're too perfect like <laughs> no I'm just more like oh my god they're so big because I don't have big titties like I remember one yeah girl I was talking, she was like on top of me and her titties were like so big in my face I was like oh this is so fun like your tits are huge dude when I fucked that girl from Emerson like you know who I'm talking about the yeah and they were just in my face. I just, like, literally put my face in them. Like, I didn't yeah, know what to do. Like, so I was, like, soft. clapping them. Like, yeah, no, same. <laughs> same. <laughs> clapping them, bro, on my face. No. And it was incredible. Like, it's amazing. I was, like, oh, my God. It was so good. But, yeah, anyways, I just hooked up with that girl to make my current girlfriend <laughs> jealous. We were open. Um, and we just ended up like kissing. I was just like, uh, like fucking like bowing down to her tits. And then we just ended up <laughs> laughing. And I was like, yeah, I'm like not really that horny right now. I don't know. I'm sorry. And then we just like talked and it was a great time. Meanwhile, Fiji was coming in the next room. And also that girl, you like the, the girl that made you come, like what yeah. we're talking about. She's also like such a good like dancer. Like oh, I feel I like she. that. Yeah, like, she didn't, like, dance at, like, Emerson, but, like, she danced before Emerson, and I don't know. I saw videos of her, but she's really good. I knew she was an artist. She was really good at I just, art. Yeah. She's, she's, yeah. I don't know. Like, and do I have a crush on her? Like, I no, think I was did. living. No, you did. Your ex got I mad at you at one point because she was like, oh, you're a little too close to her. Do you remember that? No. Okay, I do. But I do remember after me and my yes, ex Yes, because broke you up, texted her. Yes. I drunk texted her some really yeah. like, and she was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, she was, she down, was like, but she was like trying to No, Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I think that's why well, I was so happy. You also fucked her roommate and you dated her other best friend. So like at that point, <laughs> really, <laughs> she was like, all right, bitch. Bro. She's like, <laughs> and you need she to fucked calm me. Down. So it was like, yeah. yeah, it was too much. It was too, it much. Was too much. It was really, that's so funny though. Um, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should I tell my one good night? Yes. Story? Yes. Yeah. So 
I feel like at least a good one was like I was actually um, like in Atlanta with Fiji and there was like this guy that was like totally my vibe, whatever. And he wasn't being that extra. And like we like did fuck in the bathroom at this guy's house at like 6 a.m. And I was like on all fours and like it was really good. The way you like it. And he was really aggressive. Yeah, like, didn't look at me, didn't talk to me, told me to shut up when I was, like, moaning. It was amazing. Like, I loved everything about it. Um, And it was really good. Like, I feel like what made it so good, it's like, yeah, the sex was good. I didn't come. I usually don't. But, like, I felt, like, so good. So it was, like, enough for me. Yeah. And he didn't try to, like, really, like, um, like, it wasn't like he was my boyfriend for the night. Like, we were just yeah. strictly fucking. And, like, if anything, I was, like, get over here. Like, be closer to me. So, it's, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, because we were all just sit, We were all just sitting out there. And then I have yeah. that other girl that I had sex with. That's your friend over here trying to, like, flirt with me, too. And I was, like, no, I want him right now. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> but... The real tea is, though, we ended up, like, having sex a few more times. So it's, like, it's not really a one-night stand. And then eventually I was just, like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. (laughs) Because he was the guy in that story where, like, we were doing stuff in the bathroom at the club. And all those girls tried to come in. And they were, like, what's going on? Like, where's Autumn? Like, get Autumn out of there. Like, Yeah, like, they thought. And then after that, I was, like, yeah, my friends don't fuck with you like the night it's kind of he just was over. mad too yeah he was so but there mad were also other issues he didn't have decorum in certain senses because right didn't he <laughs> i just brought out my brush <laughs> i'm sorry no, no he fine. didn't he got a little od towards the end but it's like the official one night stand the that night part. we met everything was perfect right it was perfect see that's so good that's so right. good. And and it's also because he had decorum, which is, like, the next thing, like, besides the sex being good, like, orgasm, adrenaline, like, you're having a good yeah. time. Like, when they know how to leave it as what it right. is and not put pressure on you or, like, leave the next day or, like, leave that night. Like, when they just kind of... Ideally, after we fuck, you leave. Yeah, exactly. If you want to... Yeah. And it's, like, so what is one night stand decorum? It's, like, Leaving after it's over, like, not extending your stay. Yeah. It's, like, not, like, pressuring OD. Like, if it happens, it happens. Like, consent is ongoing. Just because yeah. you got, came home with me, what if we did some stuff? And then I was, like, actually, never mind. So yeah. that's, like, decorum. Um, what about texting and it's, them the next day and shit like that? How do you feel about that? I mean, it depends what the text is. Like, if it was, like... If someone texted me after a one night stand and was like, last night was so fire, like it was great to meet you. Like I'm not gonna be mad about yeah, that. Yeah, I feel but like if that's someone... actually a perfect text. Like that's Yeah. Like... Never gotten one of those, but <laughs> 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 it's always like it's like what I don't like is when they're like, Good morning, beautiful. No. No, 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 no. Or we they're immediately like, So when are we hanging out next? It's like Yeah, that's yo. what I was gonna say. So it's like, what are you doing tonight? Like no. Yeah. No, like, hold on. Let Just me... be like, thanks for the pussy. Like, <laughs> yeah. it was great. Yeah. Like, and then leave it in you. my court, you know? Right. Like, and then leave it, let it fizzle. Let it, you know, shit like that for a little minute. You don't need to hang out again the next night. No. Like, no. Or even that week. I would rather, like, Honestly, we... like, two weeks later, the weekend, if we're still yeah. feeling each other, like, that's when shit really happens. It's like. It is the pressuring. It's like the one night stand. Like, what if someone enjoys it way more than the other person? And then they're going to be the ones that's like OD flirty. But it's like this was a one night stand. And that's why it's like, it's like you can't even just go home from the club and fuck anyone anymore. It's like you have to set fucking boundaries in the Uber yeah. on the way there and be like, hey, so this is, I'm not this looking is just for anything. Like, yeah, it's like, why do we even have to say that? Like, this is our first time meeting. I shouldn't have to tell you I'm not looking for anything. But we that's should just the thing chill. I think, too, because I'm like, I feel like me and you have unique views of it because I feel like other people like maybe just like put sex or, like, hookups like that at a higher value and, like, expect that, oh, if we had sex, it's going to turn into something, like, how people answered it, like, friends with benefits or situations. Most girls dating. are like that. Yeah, and yeah. I think guys, too, honestly. Like, guys at least want it to turn into friends with benefits, like, most of the time. You know, or they think they have to play it like they want to turn it 
into like dating or something, but they don't always have to, you know? And I just thought of this other story too. So one time I had this pretty good one night stand, I would say, and he actually had like zero decorum whatsoever, but it was in like a hot He way. was really hot. He was so hot. And we worked together. It was at like a restaurant I used to work at in Boston. Yeah, me too. I worked at <laughs> And we all thought he was hot, like, for the longest. Yeah, all of us. And, like, did we did we know he was married or no? I'm trying to remember. Yes, bitch. We knew he was married. But I thought maybe it was He wasn't for, married at the time, was he? I think they were. He was engaged. But I think I thought it was, like, a not for love. Yeah. I thought it was. Oh, copy. For yeah. other reasons, you know, as sometimes people do. So I, did, I don't know. I just But whatever. it wasn't. <laughs> but also I didn't give a fuck. I thought he was hot as fuck and I wanted to fuck him. So whatever. We went out. I think it was one of my friend's birthdays and like he happened to come and we, I was like teasing the fuck out of him at the bar. Like it was really hot. And then like we got back to my friend's spot and he was like, I was like teasing him like OD to the point where he was like losing his mind and he literally like grabbed me <laughs> and ripped the fuck out of my shirt like ripped it open and I'm telling you like I had no bra on like I had nothing (laughs) under this shirt also it was autumn shirt and it was a nice shirt okay he just took that shit in raw like fucking Tarzan I don't know what the fuck that situation was obviously it was a cheap shirt and it was when my friends were outside smoking So I was just like, I don't have a shirt. And we were in the kitchen. We fucked on the counter. It was hot as fuck. It was great. And then he had decorum, obviously, because he had a fucking wife after that. But then, like, she wasn't happy about it. And she would pull up to the restaurant and, like, just she never really said anything. It was more just, like, tension. I would have to, like, work the upstairs floor and not the downstairs floor, which I But it was on him, too. Like, it's not like he was saying, like, I have a wife. Let's not do this. So you were probably like, oh, it's not real. I think, actually... Now that I think about it, I think, because you know how I said I was, like, teasing the fuck out of him? I think I was kind of like, oh, we shouldn't because you have a wife. Because you're, like, turned on by yeah, it. Yeah, because I was turned on by it. But, like, guys, I don't promote this You shit. were young. I was you young. Were young. It was in a different place. I'm not, don't advocate home wrecking. But they stayed yeah. together, and I wish them a happy marriage. I really just wanted to fuck once, so. Yeah. You were, like, 19. Yeah. We're 25 now. Like, we've grown. We've grown. It's fine. It's fine. But, yeah, it was crazy, wild, and hot. I guess, like, especially from the polls, it's, like, does a one-night stand become good because you're, like, friends with benefits after? Um, and, you know, it's like, like Fiji was saying, like a lot of guys at least want to have friends with benefits after, not just fuck you once, whatever. I personally have never had like a solid friends with benefits situation. Like I really just be catching feelings or people be catching feelings for me. Yeah. So, but you kind of had one. I had, yeah, I feel like I've had a few, but like one that I can think of, like It was, like, good. Like, the sex the first time was good, and we would, like, kind of, like, not really talk, but, like, when we went out, like, we would fuck, like, at night and stuff, and, like, I was into it, but I feel like at one point, like, I had more feelings for him than he had for me, and so it just gets to that point, and I feel like I've been in positions where it's been the other way, too, and then you just have to, like, cut it off because it's, like, what are we doing? You know, that's why friends with benefits are so hard. Like, it's almost better to just leave it at a one-night stand because one person is always going to feel more than the other person or you're going to end up dating. Right. But people argue that that's not true, I feel like. Have you ever, like... No, I haven't. But I know that there's people out there that, like, do have friends with benefits, but I feel like it's, like... Yeah, and it's just, like... Then when you think about the one-night stand, it's, like, a one-night stand that turns into a friends with benefits, it's like technically that person wasn't a one night stand. Right. Like one night stand you fuck once. It's a one night stand that turned into. It turned into, it's like this was the plan to just fuck once. But it's like you're not like out here looking for a boyfriend. Like you're not, you know what I mean? You didn't have expectations. Yeah. So it's like, and that's honestly, it's like a lot my relationships have started like that no same because the sex is so important and I feel like especially as we were talking about with so many of many of our one night stands being like not great when you have one that's like really good when you have that connection you're almost just like okay now I'm like attached to this person 
Yeah, so it's like that's why I feel like like all my one night stands are bad because the one night stands that were good turned into something. Right. So it's like they're not really a one night stand, but it's like it's all about just how you define it. But it's like what we're saying is like, yeah, it's like these one night stands sometimes do turn into something, whether it be friends with benefits, situationship, and dating. Yeah. And whatever. So it's like turning into um, like a one night stand that turns into a relationship. Like I'm literally thinking about it. it's like every single one, bro. Yeah. It's like every single one. It's like, and I'm trying to like put myself in that mindset. Like I'm just going to call her girlfriend number two. <laughs> like when I met her that night, I like that. I really did think that was going to be a one night stand because she had actually texted me the next day and like invited me to her like basketball convention. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like, we just met. I'm not about to come stay in a hotel room with you down in wherever in California it was. And I just ghost like I just ghosted. I remember. And then when she got back into town, she was like, oh, like I have these meet and greet tickets to meet this like famous ish youtuber that I was obsessed with so I was like okay yeah I'll go and then it turned into something so really I was like that was a one night stand so it's like it's just so weird but I'm literally thinking about it's like all of them every single one I wasn't like oh we're gonna date after this yeah it's all just like one night stand like we're just drunk and having fun yeah no literally same like both like my ex from when I was in London I think we, like, went on a date first, but I wasn't, like, thinking... I was in London. I'm, like, fuck it. I'm just, like, out here meeting people, going on dates, seeing the city. But then we had sex, and it was great. Right. And I was, like, no, you're mine. Yeah. And then same thing with my other ex, like, the more recent one. Like, that... He was, like, after me for a minute, but, like, I, I didn't like him. Like, I wasn't feeling it. Remember? You we, were just indifferent. I was it just, wasn't it, like you. Yeah, I thought yeah. he was hot and, like, whatever, but I wasn't looking for anything. And I remember the night we fucked. Like, okay, this is kind of, like, a fucked story, guys, so don't judge me. But the first time I fucked my ex, literally, I went there after a party with my friend. And I, he, like, had Xanax because he sold Xanax. So I took half a Xan. And then yeah. we, like, fucked on the floor, like, on, like, these, like, Which is pillows. so hot. It was really hot. And I was, like, off a Zan. Like, I was on top. Like, it was sexy as fuck. Like, da-da-da. Like, he lived in this, like, warehouse. Like, it was, like, this, like, where all the, like, art parties were in, like, Boston. Like, I don't know how to explain it. But yeah. it was just, like, a really cool spot. But, like, mid us fucking, <laughs> there's, like, it was a loft, so someone was above us, like, his roommate, I guess, and he was, like, mad. So then I just felt really awkward, and, like, also I was, like, wait, do you not have a bed? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I left, like, I literally left, like, right after we fucked. And I was, like, kind of, like, turned off by the whole experience, even though the sex was really good. But then, like, because right. the sex was really good, and I think he texted me after, like, whatever and then I just yeah it was just like I, after that one orgasm you're like fuck like even though you literally are sleeping on the floor of someone else's spot I don't give a fuck right now you're about to be my boyfriend right <laughs> I know but it's like at that time you didn't know the exact situation yeah he could have just been staying there for like literally two days like you had right no and we that. were all messy during that time period like I feel like that was like yeah. the era of like we were in college at the time like we were partying a lot we had just finished stripping like it was like everyone was in these like weird middle situations so I wasn't like yeah now I would not ever do that or put up with that but right. then but yeah. you had to go through that, right. you know. And, yeah, I was going to tell this, like, the one-night stand story with my ex-boyfriend. But, honestly, fuck all that shit because girlfriend number one. So, basically, what happened, like, I was in this abroad study program. And I literally, like, I wanted to go to Spain. Like, that was the program I wanted. I, I don't know if I missed the deadline or I, I think I just didn't get in or something. It was with a different school. It wasn't through Emerson. Um, and whatever. So then my advisor was like, all right, well, you can go to the Netherlands, like with like 12 people from Emerson <laughs> for like 16 millimeter film, which if you guys don't know, it's literally like you install film <laughs> like into a fucking 19, camera, like 20, some crazy 50, shit. Yeah. Wasn't interested in it. Had no idea. I'm like 12 people. Great. I'm going to hate all of them. I was like, I'm Especially done. Especially Emerson. I, like. Dude, and I get there, you guys, and not only are eight out of the 12 people women, but they're gay. <laughs> they're all gay. I mean, if there was one straight girl. Too. 
It was very Dude, and I was literally like, hallelujah. I was supposed to be there, like, whatever. So it's like this one girl, like, girlfriend number one. Like, we had been, like, kind of feeling vibes. She was, like, older than me and shit. And then, like, all of us, like, went to the, you know, the little bar in the Netherlands. And we were all sitting there drinking. And me and girlfriend number one were, like, flirting, talking. And she just, like, it was, like, so great. We were talking about, like, sex positions we liked. Like, we were just very open. Because we were drunk. And she was, like, do you want to go to the bathroom with me? And I was, like, "Uh uh-huh. And I was, like, a baby gay, kind of. I wasn't a baby gay, but I was not as sexually experienced yeah, as I am now. Yeah, she turned you out, for She sure. was the first person to strap me, like, all that shit. So, like, I was kind of nervous. But basically, we went into the bathroom. This other bitch was in there that I fucking don't like. And I was like, get out, get out, get out. I was trying to, like, fix my makeup. We were both, like, being fake, like, in the mirror, trying to fix ourselves. And then as soon as she went out, I fucking grabbed that bitch by her head. And I was just, I, we by made her out. Head. We went into, yeah, I just, like, grabbed her and I just kissed her. And we went into the bathroom. She was like, I mean, into the stall. She was like fingering me. She was like, I want to take you back to the spot and fuck you. And I was like, okay. Then we go up. We're literally, mind you, Emerson has a castle in the Netherlands, you guys. Like, I'm not lying. It's like an actual castle. <laughs> yeah, That's where that I was living. Crazy. So she took me to the top of the tower. <laughs> like, I'm not fucking tale. around. And we were in this enclosed area at the top of the tower. And we were fucking. And she was also the first person to slap me. She was on top of me, and she was like, can I slap you? And I was like, there's no way. She just asked. I was like, what? Like, trying to be sexy. She's like, can I slap you? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then she fucking smacked me, bro. And I was like, ah. you were like I was it. just like. <laughs> and it was just, like, literally the best. Like, I did not think. I honestly thought she was way too hot for me. I was like, this is all I'm going to get, and I'm fine with it. And then I don't know what she did after, but I think I, like, went on, like, a a trip with my other friend the next day. Like, I left the Netherlands. So it was, like, perfect. Perfect. So it was, like, the next morning. And then she was, like, texting me. And she was, like, honestly, I want to fuck you again. And I was, like, same. And then the rest is history. Oh, no. Can you believe that? Honestly, dude. Girlfriend number one. Honestly, she could have been the one, bro. Still, that tops everything. It's above the wall. I'm not even lying. It was so magical. And it's, like. At least I know, like, she holds that experience, too, because, like, it was that magical. Like, how could you forget that, you know? Like, yeah. So, whatever. But, yeah, that turned really good, and, like, it was very one-night standy. Like, we were fucking in the bathroom, moved to the spot. No, you know what I mean? Like, that's the hottest, too. Like, I feel like one of the hottest things about one-night stands is, like, when you're out and you're drunk and you're building that sexual tension. That's the best That's the best part. part. And then, like, you know, and that's why, that's what I do now. I just build it. And then I run away because I know skirt. that that's the best part. But like, there's times where it's, it is great. Like how you had, or even right. like with some of my exes, it was like that, but like, it's really just the adrenaline, the buildup, the like, da 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 of 100%. like, you don't know this person enough yet, but yeah. Great. Yeah. That's what's <laughs> wet about one night stands for sure. Okay. So now we're going to flip it and talk about what we're so dry about with one night stands. Honestly, a lot easier. <laughs> so obviously one is like, just like your classic walk of shame situation. Like we've all been there definitely like in college and shit, like walking back to the dorm, LOL. Um, but yeah, so the walk of shame, I had one particular situation (laughs) where I was in LA for school. It was like my first night out. Like I was super excited. I was like dancing on stage with the DJ at the club. (laughs) Like it was a wild night and I ended up going all the way to fucking Pasadena, which if you don't know is fucking just, what is that? I live in, yeah, the Valley, but (laughs) So I went all the way out there, but I was living in Hollywood at the time. So Hollywood to Pasadena is like ridiculous. So I went all the way there into like this fucking garden jungle, not jungle. (laughs) It was just like mad green. Like it wasn't the city, but so then I was like hooking up with this girl and it was like good, but like I was like really drunk and I basically like fell asleep while she was eating my (laughs) pussy and I was like bleeding a little bit, but like for my period but she didn't care and I was like too drunk and tired I was like okay so I like fell asleep and like had a dream like it was like a whole weird thing but anyway so like I had my period so she gave me some shorts to wear and so I had to wear those shorts home they were like pajama shorts and then she like hit me up every day after that 
to get her shorts back. And I was like, bitch, <laughs> at this point. I, but I no, at first I was like, yeah, sure. Like, but Leading then like, on, like you're gonna... I wasn't very responsible back then. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure what happened is I was just like, oh, yeah, like I'll meet you here. And then I ended up just like ghosting and not going. I used to do that all the time. And then she would just like hit me up about the shorts and I just started ghosting. Like I was like, all right, enough about the shorts. Like enough. <laughs> Wait, did and they then, have like, a stain? They were a little bit, but I washed them after. So it's like the stain was gone, but it's like they had been stained. You know what I mean? Like, if the stain was gone, that's not as bad. It was just, and then she like chewed How me out How expensive were text. these shorts? They were literally like $10 little shorts from Target. And I feel like she section. was just butthurt that you kind of ghosted and didn't want to fuck again. That's I, exactly. What it like. It's about that's what the it was shorts, giving. but it's not about the shorts. It wasn't about the shorts at all. It's like at this point, I'm about to give them to a fucking bird and yeah. buy them to you. Like I, I was like, where are you? I'll put them in an Uber. Like, what do you want from me? I don't want to see now you. Now they have like, that, the Uber delivery thing. They have that now. Yeah. And it was like, it was a one night stand. Like I knew that this was a person that I was like sexually attracted to enough. Yeah. <laughs> but I wasn't like ever. I wasn't. Didn't like her. Didn't yeah. any of that shit. I was just you literally fell out in LA. When she was eating your pussy, that should be a sign, bro. I've I've done that too before, though. Actually, it's so because it's like low key soothing and relaxing. And I was like, <laughs> no, if it's good, it should be like. <sighs> but yeah, the walk of shame shit is lame when you're in an Uber. Yeah, we've all it's been like, there. Ugh, it's just it happens, you know. We've all been there. Give your it is Uber a giggle. Um, but yeah, actually, I have a story kind of similar about eating pussy a little <laughs> bit that was dry. I mean, honestly, it was my first time eating pussy. I was at this, like, party. I was high as fuck off Molly. I started, like, making out with this girl. We, like, kind of half fucked in the shower. It was, like, really hot. Like, I looked a mess, bro. Like, my, my makeup is, like, fucked. Dude. Like, I didn't give a fuck. But she also, it was in Boston where, like... I don't think it was, like, another warehouse, but it was, like, you know how people had, like, loft things where it was, like, multiple apartments and, like, whatever. So, like, she lived on the downstairs from where the party was. So, we, like, went downstairs and, like, we're still hooking up and I ate her pussy, but she was actually on the end of her period, like you were, and didn't tell me. And, like, because it was the first time that I ate pussy, like, you can, like, taste the metallic. Like, it just, like, was not it. But I was just, like, okay, like, I'm going to power it through, I guess. And, like, you know how when you do Molly Rocks, like, the taste in your mouth is just awful. So, like, it was already that. But anyway, like, I was just, like, the other parts of it were fine. So I was just trying to ignore that part. But then after that, she had a boyfriend. But they were open. And she wanted to turn it into, like, a little thruple situation. And then I also found out that she was pregnant at this time. Or or she had gotten – no, because she was on her period. She had gotten pregnant right after because she kept hitting me up. And she was pregnant, like, with him and, like, wanted me to be their, like, unicorn type of thing. And it was just, like, no. Like, it was just no. Like, we could have left it at, like, we honestly should have left it at the shower. We should have left it at the shower and not continued downstairs. But, so, I'm so dry about just one night stands where you keep, like, pushing it. Like, when it should have stopped, but you keep going. Or when they try to turn it into something after. And, again, listen to our episode about bi girls when, you know, they try to involve you with their boyfriend or whatever. Not a vibe. So, yeah. Yeah, it's like I wanted to have this experience with you and now you're trying to bring your boyfriend into it. Like, that's not what I signed up for. Like, I all I did was sign up for, like, us to have this experience and interaction right now. Like, that's it. Yeah. And it's just, like, it can seem – it's just, like, you need to just, like – if you have a one-night stand and you want to, like, whether it's, like, bring them into a throuple or see them again, it's, like, you need to wait at least, like – I feel like this is like the classic movie. It's like you got the guy waits three days to call after the first date. Yeah. Can we do yeah, that again? Honestly, please. Because we don't do that anymore. Like no. that's something we should bring back. I've been thinking about that so much because I'm such an advocate for like sexual tension and building shit and like having space. Because right. like I'm not going to want you if you're just on my dick. And I feel like people really, really don't understand that. And I think it's just because of social media. They see you posting stories. They like have constant access to like pictures of you, your tweets, like whatever. So they feel like they're like, I don't know if it's FOMO or just like they want to lock you down or like whatever. But it's just, yeah, we need to go back to the times where it was just the fucking telephone. And, you know, if I don't answer. I'm no, that's home. such and, a like, good point. Yeah. It is social media. It's like they're seeing you on your story that you're out, you're doing something, and then they slide up and say something. But it's like 
if we didn't have Instagram, that interaction would have never. And it's just like sometimes it's fine. It really just depends. But it's just like I just feel like a general rule is like just fucking hold on. Like, and it's also like we're drunk right now. I can't even really process anything. Like I yes, don't, like, like it's just let too me much. think about it for a couple days. Like let me process. Yeah, what let me happened. remember you yeah. in a good way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. And the other thing is like for you more because you you know go out more than I do yeah that's really why but um when you see like your one night stand like repeatedly like after and you deal with that a lot because you're in like a like a small ish type of yeah. scene where people go to like these numerous like spots or whatever so it's like it definitely sucks for you no yeah and I feel like last summer like I was definitely fucking more people after I just got out of a relationship and like also I'm not from Atlanta like I didn't go to high school here like whatever and I was kind of like naive to like how close the scene is and it's just like damn like y'all are friends with this person who's friends with this person and you're always at this bar like I don't want that so like I've definitely been like okay I've experienced that I don't want to see like you're supposed to be I'm used to like a one night stand and then you disappear but like I don't want to keep seeing you out like it's one thing if you follow them on social media or whatever but like yeah the running into them can be like just kind of awkward yeah and I feel like for you it's like even though when we were in Boston like we had like the Emerson community and later then we had that like art warehouse community and stuff but like before that we were very used to like going to clubs and bars and spots that like you would never see people again right and so it's different like that's kind of what it's like for me in LA like when I do go out it's like somewhere completely new like I haven't found that niche which it's like it it's good and bad because it's like you know you like the vibe you know you'll like the music and all that shit but it's like you're seeing the same people and over and over it can ruin that shit for sure um and then also it's like obviously it's like this is like the biggest one. It's like the decorum. Like we're we're dry about when they don't leave, when they like extend their stay too much, or like just like like even just like touch your stuff, like look at your just stuff hang in out, your room, like just want yeah, to get just like way after too how we talked about on their red flags episode. Like it's yeah. just like because it, it, even if the sex wasn't like earth shattering, maybe you could have remembered it as like. A fun time. Earth shattering. <laughs> you could have remembered it as a fun time, but when they just stay and then you now your mem- your last memory of them is you trying to kick them out of your house. And you being annoyed. Yeah. Then it's like it, then it's terrible. You never want to see them again. Like girls love a mystery. At we the end love of the day. a mystery. Like not all women, but like it's like people in general. Like it's like it's pure science, yeah. bro. Like, if you're around too much, if you go too hard, like, scientifically, it yeah. doesn't work. Like, it's not even just, tension, like... you need that just, like, imagination, like, the balance between just, like, giving a little bit but not too much and, like, letting your imagination right. work and just, like, anticipate, like, being excited to see them again, like, all of that, you know? Yeah, like, you don't want to be too distant. Right. It's, like, there's too much mystery, I mean, I, but it's, like, like... I'd rather have that. Yeah, true. <laughs> I mean, that's, like, personal preference. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, like, at that... But generally speaking, it's, like, you do want to give a little, and like, that you fucking are, like, down and shit. But it's, like, yeah, some people, like, it, it's, like, literally I hate. Like, that's, like, the biggest it's the one. Worst. It's, like, when they don't I'd much leave. rather go to someone else's spot than go to mine. And I feel like for some reason, also, again, the type of people that I fucked in the past, like, it's just, like, my spot is better or it's closer or it's, like, whatever. Yeah. But, like. I've left my spot to like go somewhere else, but their spot, you have control over when you leave, you know, when they right. come to your spot. So it's spot, perfect. It's like, we're going to, we're not going to fuck that up. Like, right. well, I will be out that bitch. I will wait out that bitch. Like I'm not sleeping in. Cause I don't like to like sleep in at other people's spaces anyway. You know? Ew, exactly. It's like, I want to be in my own bed. I want right. like my water cup. Yeah. I want like my face wash. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just like, I, that's why with girls, they can get a little tricky because they have all that face wash shit there and, like, they will get you water and shit. So it's, like, with girls, like, you got to just be, like, okay, bye. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. um, another one, too, is, like, when they, like, aren't clear about, you know, their medical history. Maybe they have, like, an STI or something. So it's, like, that can happen in a lot of one night stands. Like y'all aren't trying to be anything. Like you, maybe you don't really give a fuck about each other. You just want to have sex. So it's yeah. like, unfortunately, like a lot of STIs, like if you're having unprotected sex or even if you are like shit happens, it's like yeah. 
a lot of STIs do come from that because there's not that much communication. Like you're drunk, right, you're, you're drunk, out, you're just fucking, and that's you don't why really like care. You should generally, like use a condom is like the best, but like I've right. definitely been in a situation before where I've had a one night stand and gotten an STD from it. Um, I guess I'll tell this. Yeah. So pretty much with this dude, he was, uh, he was not cute. Like he really was not cute. I don't know what I was on. Like we were at a bar we don't usually go to. I was with you and Sylvia. Yeah. And I like left, I was like on one. And what's crazy is that night too, like we got pulled over, like the cops literally pulled us over because like he didn't put his blinker on or some shit. I don't fucking know. And then they made me drive, which mind you, I have not driven since I was like maybe 17. Like I got in a lot of car accidents and have PTSD driving, let alone driving in the city. This was in Boston. So, okay, like, officer, I guess I have to drive right. home. So I had to drive, and he was, like, coaching me through. But honestly, it was kind of hot because, like, when the cop was, like, going back with his license or whatever, I was, like, feeling up on him, like, whatever. I was, like, oh, this is so bad. Like, da-da-da. Oh, my God. So it was kind of hot because, like, you know, I'm going to make the best of the moment type shit. So <laughs> that was, like, okay. But, like, we got back to my spot. The sex was not that great. He didn't leave the next day. And then the next day also, like, he wanted more. Like, he was like, oh, let's go on a date, whatever. I didn't. I was, I, I think I just ghosted him. And Good. then, like, about a week later, he texted me, which honestly, like, shout out to him for letting me know because he didn't have yeah. to let me know. And a lot of people don't because they're embarrassed by it. But, like, at right. least he told me. And I didn't have any symptoms. It was gonorrhea. I just went, took the pill, got the shot, and I was good. So, like, right. that, like, he didn't have decorum in any part of the one night stand. And it was, <laughs> it was driving with a suspended <laughs> license. So, that's, it was the blinker and then the suspended license. So, that's why I had to drive. So, th- I, I remember I woke up, he was watching fucking, like, football on his phone. Like, I'm just like, go, like, get out. Like, I, I don't care about this game you're watching. I don't know. So, anyway, like, it was just, but thank God that he told me because I caught yeah. it before I had an, any symptoms. And guys, there's no shame about having STDs. Like most people that have had casual sex, like if you're not using condoms, you've probably gotten one at one point in your life. And like most of them are curable and whatever. Again, like protective yeah. sex is preferred, but yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, yeah. And I really didn't even start like really like researching about STIs until I started having sex with men. And like, yeah, you can get STIs from women 100 percent. So yeah. that was like on me to not really like care about it as much, I guess. Yeah. But again, like women just communicate more. Like I know that like they are being honest with me if they say they never had anything. So it's like, OK, cool. Like we're going to yeah. fucking go off. But anyways, but yeah, I have had. Like, I have, what's it called? Like, HPV, which is, like, one of the ones where it's, like, there's no, like, it kind of, you know, it stays and goes. It's super, super common. I, like, literally cried when I found out. But it was, like, not that big of a deal. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. It just, like, comes and goes in six months or whatever. Yeah. And that's, like, a hard one because I don't know where it came from. Like, it probably came from my ex. But, like, I... um. It's, like, a weird one because guys can't really get it. They just give it. Give it, yeah. So it's, like, he just gave it to me. But also, like, I, like, was a stripper. Like, I really don't know, like, exactly where that came from. But um, it's definitely, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 But definitely get tested regularly. Like, I feel like it takes, like, going through an experience like that where you're, like, okay, like, I need to care about my sexual health more. And, like, I hate condoms, but you should really use them if you're fucking someone. Especially if it's, like... Someone, this is your first time fucking them. You don't know where they've been. Like, da, da, da. Like, it's just best practice, honestly. 100%. Yeah, another one is, like, so it's, like, you're, it's a one-night stand. Like, you guys might not have had a chance to, like, talk about what you're into sexually. So it's, like, something that can make a one-night stand dry is when your sex isn't compatible. Like, you don't like the same things. Um, so I definitely <laughs> had an experience with that. You guys, if you guys listen, you know that, like, I'm kinky. Like, we're both kinky. Like, I'm into a lot of things that people probably aren't into. Or if yeah. they are, they're, like, embarrassed to talk about it. Um, but I was, this girl was, like, a beatboxer. So, like, the way she moved her mouth, bro, like, she was literally, like, she would beatbox. She's like, like <laughs> And she was very dumb, so that's what initially stood out to me. I think we matched on a dating app or, like, Instagram or something. But then she was, like, in, like, Boston for the night or something, like, beatboxing at this (laughs) fucking thing, whatever. So we met, 
Um, and we ended up like going back to my place and like fucking. I don't really like really, remember the whole night, but essentially she wanted me to call her mommy, which I'm not 100% opposed. Like yeah. if I was dating someone, I felt comfortable with them. We were trying a new role play. Maybe. Yeah. We just met. Yeah. And she wanted me to call her mommy and she wanted to call me Kitty. Kitty is weird. So. Like Kitty with like a T or a D? T, bro. Okay. Because Kitty is like pedophile. pedophile. No. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Kitty with a cat. Like a cat. Okay. That's a little better, but still. Anyways, I was like, there's no fuck. I, I just like it didn't last you didn't long. do like, it did you do it or no you didn't say it I don't remember I probably did yeah but I just remember like not feeling like like not I just kind of got the ick from it yeah. like it just like she was so hot over text like so dominant but then like in person it was like it was like giving like bottom dominant I don't know what it was like I was uh. just like and it was it was just horrible. Like it just wasn't compatible. I didn't like it. It wasn't a good time. We never talked again. Bye. Yeah. No. The mommy thing's weird because like I feel like we've both called people daddy before, and it's totally but I have bad. daddy issues. I don't have mommy issues. Yeah. So it makes sense. Yeah. And I feel like daddy's just hotter. Like I'd call a girl daddy, but I don't want to call anyone mommy. That's weird. Bro, I literally not kink shaming. Father- but yeah it's father's day today as we're recording this and like literally I remember like last father's day when I was like dating my ex I would always be like happy father's day daddy it was like a whole thing and I literally like today I'm like fuck like I don't want to text my real dad I want to text him and that's why it's just like I don't actually want to text him but it's like it's father's day and it did come into my mind because that Anyways, it's fucking stupid. It's so embarrassing, but I'm going to be real with you guys. I'm going to tell it how it is. Um, But, yeah, not shaming mommy, daddy, kinks. Everything's totally fine. It's just, like, you don't really pull that night one. Yeah, and it's just incompatible. Like, I've had that. That's why you said, like, it's important if you can sex them before so you know. Like, I've sexed guys where they've been into, like, cuckolding and, like, shit that, like, like, cum slut stuff where I was just, like, I don't know, like – I, yeah, <laughs> so it was just like, I, at least we sexted, and I know that's what you're into, and I know right. it's not so it's compatible. Right, like, thank God, yeah. it wasn't like a mommy-kitty situation. Right, where you're just in the moment, and you're, like, instantly dry. But, yeah, and then I just have, like, another situation. It was, like, this is, like, doesn't really relate, but it was, like, me and Fiji were both living in Boston, and, like, Fiji's boyfriend, or, like, they were, like, a situ- – or you guys were dating at that time. We were so like, on and off. Si- pretty, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they were together, and his best friend was, like, you know, trying to haul at me, of course. Like, I'm the other best friend. Like, whatever. It just matched up. And I was, like, super gay at this time, but was, like, a little bit open to being, like, yeah, maybe I want to fuck guys. And, like, he was kind of turning me on. He was, like, OD, but whatever. I was really just, like, I want to experiment. And, like, all this hype up, all this sexual tension, all fucking night, and this man drinks way too much. I don't know what he took, but his dick could not get hard. And it was horrible. And he was so embarrassed about it after. And I was just like, and then we tried to fuck again, and the same thing happened. No, we talked about this in our orgasm episode, too, because it's like, I've been in situations where it's happened, and a guy's handled it well, and it's been fine. But, like, when they just... When you see them spiral and they're like, no, we can do it. I can do it. And they, like, I swear to God, they're like, I'm like, this to is their just dick. embarrassing. Like, come on. Like, this is embarrassing at this point. Like, like just, just, it's fine. You can't, it go. We're not going to have sex right now. Bye. Don't be all like, let's try to make it work. No. Because <laughs> no. I remember he was just like fingering me and like doing all this stuff. And like, honestly, I was like very gay at the time. So that's what I was used to. Yeah. It's so like, like getting just finger keep fucked. That. Just keep so I was on, that's what I oh my god I remember I said that to you I was like I had gay sex with him like we literally <laughs> had that. lesbian sex because he because <laughs> we literally did I didn't suck his dick it wasn't hard we didn't fuck it wasn't hard he was like fucking kissing my neck like fucking me with his fingers 
But really, I do remember the fingers like feeling good. So I think that's why <laughs> that's I wanted to give them another do, chance. Though, because I feel like they'll like turn the attention to you to distract yeah. from the fact that they can't. But then like then they'll be like kind of turned on by the fact that like they're turning you on and then they'll try again. And it's like, no, just make it about me. <laughs> I know. And I wanted it so bad. Like I was like such in my era where I was just like fuck it I'm gonna try everything once and like I just ah oh, he's so annoying um <laughs> but yeah and the really last fun. thing that's dry is like when sometimes it's like it should have just we kind of talked about this but it, you couldn't you should have left it out a one night stand yeah. sometimes when you try to make it more like a situation ship it just like turns out bad like yeah that one I talked about in the beginning like it was a great one night stand but then like it just like, I don't know, we got mad at each other. Like, it's like any, like, emotions get involved, and it's just, like... Yeah, uh, because I feel like with one-night stands, the best thing to do is go into it with no expectations besides, like, that night. Like, it's different if you've been talking to them before and you've gone on dates and, like, whatever, then I wouldn't consider that a one-night stand because you've had, like, stuff leading up to it. Right. But, like, yeah, just no expectations. And if it goes well and you guys decide to be friends with benefits or situationship and dating, then roll with it, you know? Roll with it, But yeah. don't have expectations. Just leave it alone. Yeah, it alone. don't have expectations. That's honestly the fucking takeaway. Like, don't have expectations about anything. Like, I'm so done with expectations, Literally. Bro. I'm so done. Literally. I didn't, like, we were talking about we need someone to, like, sign some shit before we fuck. I'm, like, at that point. Honestly, that's why I don't be fucking people anymore because it's just like, bro, you were just wasting my time. It's definitely what, like, enticed you to doing, like, a celibacy thing, too. Exactly. Like, because people be fucking whack. Um, but, okay, let's get into these stories. Yes. We're going to share some stories from our viewers. So our first story that was shared um, was actually in response to our last episode. I talked about how I don't fuck with male strippers. And this girl was like, okay, well, I fucked one. <laughs> so um, she sent in this story, and I'm going to read it for y'all, and then we'll talk about it. So – she said, so I met this guy at the strip club where I was working at the time, and he just so happened to be a male dancer, too. We were flirting in the DMs, and we just decided, fuck it, let's link, because I was trying to be cute and give him a little birth chart reading. <laughs> Anyways, he picks me up. We grab some drinks and head over to his house, and we were just talking about literal bullshit. Mind you, I wasn't even thinking about fucking. I thought we were just chilling, but I was young and dumb. <laughs> We nice. go to his room, and he just goes down on me. I was not expecting that at fucking all. His dick was so fucking big and thick, I literally couldn't take it. And he kept wanting to go round after round after round. <laughs> I thought my pussy was going to break. It was literally swollen for days. Damn. I was just trying to tell him, like, hey, I should probably go back home now after like three rounds and he just kept wanting more. I ended up spending the night and getting home in the morning. But like, why was we sleeping naked on the first link? <laughs> <laughs> then he told me he doesn't want a relationship. We lost contact for a long ass minute. I thought he was my baby daddy, but thank God he isn't. LMFAO. He actually just recently... Re we actually just recently reconnected, and I think I'm gonna try and get some again. Only if he's down, though. <laughs> this is a roller coaster. I love her, bro. This <laughs> is crazy, but I can relate to the pussy being swollen. Like that's so real. Like yes. when you fuck a lot, and they have a really big dick. That's like really intense. But this is crazy, and also, yeah, thank God he's not your baby daddy <laughs> yeah. because honestly, bitch, though. what? This but she is might crazy. reconnect with him, like, honestly. But that's the thing. They just want to keep going sometimes. And it's like, there comes yeah. a point where after you fucked, like, a couple times, even when it's good, where it's just like, okay, like, my pussy needs a break. Like, I'm in pain. I like, know. Like, give me a second. But And when she, when they were just, like, chilling, and then he started going down at her, and she was like, I was not expecting that at all like I definitely feel that like guys can be surprising sometimes yeah you can think that and it's like what like, the fuck chilling. and then all of a sudden they're like here's my dick like that's crazy I mean it sounds like it was like the first time was kind of a lot but like at least you know that he's got a big dick and 
Right. Like, it seems like you did. She, you know, she liked it. If she wants to maybe reconnect, like it was probably a lot for like the first day. But it's like looking back, maybe she's like, I mean, the sex was good. Right. And she said he didn't want a relationship. So maybe she wanted something more after, which is kind of what we were talking about, where it's like. Right. And at least they had that conversation kind of like at least he told you. But I mean, maybe he's grown. Maybe you're in different places and run it back for round two it's been i love this story so much no literally i'm obsessed like so wet so wet for this that's so crazy that was because that was like my first time like our first time reading it like that's crazy um wow like we don't have stories like that like that's (laughs) not no that's a good ass story but it's not even dry like a lot of it is like pretty wet you know what i mean but it's like overall it's like I guess, like, if she... Well, the dry Like, maybe he just, just said he doesn't want... too much. And maybe need. he just told her, like, I don't want a relationship. Like, maybe she wasn't even pushing for that. Maybe he was just like, yeah, I don't want one. And she's like, okay. Yeah, I feel like that and, like, one, like, when you're... It's kind of unexpected. Sometimes it can be hot, but sometimes it can be like, whoa, okay. You know, it kind of seems like he caught you off guard a little bit, but... But yeah, one hundred percent. Definitely caught off guard <laughs> yeah. because like that image of like, why were we sleeping naked on the first link? Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I don't sleeping sleep naked. naked is so intimate. Yeah, I like don't when like you're cuddling especially if you're cuddling. Either. That's another decorum I thing. I have before, but like I don't. Yeah, I'm not a big cuddler in general. Like I get hot when I sleep. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, shout out to her. She's sometimes you used to cuddle with me in the morning. You like cuddling in the morning more. Not yeah. like OD, yeah. but you were like kind of still sleeping. Maybe yeah. you thought I was someone else. So I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead because I literally don't remember. Because yeah, I craved affection more. from you. You give you give way more affection now in general. Like back yeah. then it was like you were like. And we were. It, it's like weird to think about like our friendship back then. Because I really felt like. A lot of the times I felt like I was younger than you. Yeah, like we kind like of had like a little vibes. sister, yeah. big sister. But now it's like we've transitioned. I don't feel like we're that anymore. Much, yeah. I mean, we were both like mature in different ways. But I feel like, yeah, because you would always be yeah. like, give me a kiss. I know. <laughs> and like, I mean, I still do that when we're drunk, yeah. you guys. Literally yeah, so Yeah, but now I will actually give you a kiss. Like we kiss our Right. Fingers. It's but just like, different before now. I was like, bitch. <laughs> But I loved it. I, like, loved the little sister vibe. Yeah. Like, I was You're cool like, with it. I know. Jesus Christ. All right. Next um, story. Yeah, the next story is from a man, which yeah, is Yeah, which cool. is unique. Love that. We love that. We love the Thanks for submitting. The male listeners. The male population of listeners is growing a little bit, which is surprising to us. Every time we talk about sex, they're here. But anyway, this guy said, so pretty much I met this shorty at a bar and we were feeling each other. So I was running it up, buying her drinks and rolling up. Then we left and she gave me some fire roadhead and we went to my spot. Long story short, the sex was tight and we knocked out. Basically, I called her an Uber home and never heard from her again. SMH. Shit, (laughs) dude. She's kind of a bad bitch. I don't know. He got ghosted. Yeah, he got ghosted. I mean, that's kind of what we talk. Like, you can't have expectations. But I get, like, he spent money on her. Like, he seemed like maybe he wanted more, but she wasn't really. No, but, like, whose decision was it to spend money? His. Exactly. Exactly. Not, and I feel like she was just trying to be a bad bitch. Like, have some crazy, like, like, she's giving you road head. Like, yeah. she's not really, like, like treating you like a boyfriend like you guys just met and she's like I'm gonna just fucking like slut it out real quick yeah like I mean and who knows maybe she wanted like how we talked about where you just kind of like leave it at that and you have that good memory of that and maybe the sex sex wasn't as tight as you thought it was exactly listen to our orgasm episode gentlemen yeah um yeah maybe you thought it was tight did you give her head because this woman (laughs) gave you road head that is a treat did you go a down treat. on her? Because I don't see anything in here about you going down. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Facts. We need more context. What yeah. also went down. I feel right. like guys be writing so little. This girl right. gave us a novel. Right. And he's like, the sex was tight. Never heard from her right. again. Like, guys hello. are crazy, bro. Yeah. But it's honestly nice, like, hearing from a male perspective. Because, like. We do get a lot of like, like a lot of women are very like they, 
a lot of guys will like say they listen to the podcast, but I don't think they really they, they do. Watch I think the they watch the clips like, on our story. They watch our clips on social media and are like, yeah, I saw that episode. No, you yeah. Didn't. And then they only but listen lo- to the exhibitionism one or the like, anytime it's about sex, they listen because I see right. the gender breakdown. But yeah, I don't think they really listen. And honestly, a lot of the like responses we get from guys, especially on YouTube, are hate. So it's nice to get a guy that's telling his little slut stories when he was wet for yeah. some shit. Like, we want to hear more of that, so. All the attention we get from guys on YouTube are hate. Yeah. Our YouTube shorts, like, our YouTube videos, <laughs> our blogs, everything. Just shitting on our lives, honestly. But, like, on Instagram and TikTok, like, sometimes we get hate on TikTok, but not as much. We got one recently on Instagram, the hate dude. Oh, that yeah. That was just random. I'm, assu- I'm going to assume he's a dude. Yeah. We couldn't really tell. I mean, but... duh. Yeah. Absolutely. Shit. But anyways, love our haters. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what did you guys think about this episode? I feel like thinking about the one night stand is super interesting. Like defining it, it's different for everyone. Like there are good things about one night stands if they're done correctly. And I think the problem is we're just at a place in society where like everyone expects so much. They always have eyes on you. Yeah. And it's hard to do like the one night stand that like Fiji and I really like. Where <laughs> yeah. it's like it's fire, you leave. You don't talk until three days after, if that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So let us know what you guys think. Comment below. Subscribe. Share. Follow us on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, everything. Um, we're on every social media platform, too. Um, and as always, our email is open. So wet, so dry. The O's are zeros. If you have a topic you really want us to talk about, a story if you need any advice on anything like we can definitely help you out or if you just want to say hi like yeah we're here so hit us up the dms are always open mm-hmm. um and let us know what you guys thought about this episode what you want to see moving forward i feel like we're getting into our groove more now yeah um and definitely ready to talk about you know some new things so um but yeah so let us know what you think And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. I think Xander and Vanessa are both great prototypes of, like, what this show's all about. Like, Xander went through it being, like, probably obsessed with Vanessa kind of to an unhealthy level. Just, like, chasing after her so hard. Maybe even thinking that she couldn't love anyone else beside Vanessa if there is any... (laughs) 